Racks are probably one of the best things about Ableton Live. And if you don't know anything about racks, I have a whole video that you can check out. I'll link it on the screen somewhere and in the description below that goes through everything you need to know about racks. But there are a few little things that I left out. And in this video, I wanna cover five things that you might not have known about racks in Ableton Live. So in no particular order, let's start off with number one, and that is point values in the macro mapping. Okay, so here I have a drum break on a track. And here on that drum break track, I have an auto filter with the frequency control mapped to a macro, just controlling the frequency of a high pass filter. And here what I actually wanna do is have it so that when this frequency control is all the way at the bottom, we have the auto filter turned off. And then as soon as I start to move this control, the auto filter actually turns on. So to do that, all I need to do is right click on the device activator for the auto filter and map that to the frequency of the rack. Next, what I need to go ahead and do is go to the macro mapping section by clicking on this M button, and that will open up the macro mapping in the browser section. So here, typically what you would do is go to the minimum value and set this to one, and then the maximum value and set this to zero. And now if we go out of the mapping mode, you'll see that as I increase the frequency control, the auto filter turns on, and as I decrease it all the way to the bottom, it turns off. But if we look really closely and start to increase this frequency control with the arrow keys and the shift key, you'll see that it doesn't actually turn on until a little bit after 27 hertz. Now, in the grand scheme of things, this is not a huge issue, but we can actually use point values in the mapping fields to make it so that it turns on basically instantly as opposed to having to wait a little bit. So let's go ahead here and open up the macro mapping switch again. And now instead of inserting one in the minimum field, I'm actually going to insert zero point zero, five. And now let's go back down to the frequency control, pull this all the way down to zero, and now have a look at what happens. If I hold down shift and press the up arrow key on my keyboard, we can see that this auto filter is now turned on as soon as this frequency control is moved up to 26.1 hertz. If we look in the macro mapping section, you'll see that it still actually says zero to zero, but this minimum value here is actually set to 0 0.05, which is why this works. So now I can play around freely with this frequency control, knowing that as soon as it has moved off this bottom value, the filter is actually gonna be turned on. Really cool. The second thing you might not have known about racks is that duplicating or copying an effect either within the same chain or across multiple chains that has a parameter mapped to a macro actually retains that mapping. Let me show you what I mean. So here I have a drum break and on this drum break, I have a rack that has three different chains, a reverb, a delay, and a dry chain. Now I'm not gonna play this all at once because we'll just get every single sound of each of these chains coming through at the same time, and it's gonna be a little bit loud. So what I actually wanna be able to do is control the level of this drum break being sent to this reverb and this delay here in these different chains using a utility device. And I'm gonna use that before the effect. So let's go ahead and add a utility here before the reverb. And now with this utility, I'm gonna right click and map this to macro one, and we're gonna call this send. Next, we can go to the mapping section and set the maximum value to zero. And now we have the macro one here controlling the gain of the utility before this reverb control, which is effectively controlling the send level of the break to this reverb. Let's just go ahead here and close up these different macros so we can only see the first macro. Now, the first thing that's kind of cool to show is that we could actually duplicate this utility here with command and D. And we can see that that gain control has retained the mapping of that first utility all the way to the range as well from negative infinity to zero. But in this instance, that's not what we wanna do. So let's undo that by deleting the utility. And now we can actually copy this utility to the other delay chain here to perform the exact same function. So there's a few different ways we can do this, but the easiest way is to hold down either the option key on Mac, or I believe it's the control key on Windows to click and drag this utility from the reverb to the delay chain and just place it before the delay. And here you'll notice that the utility before this delay still has its macro mapped and so does this utility before the reverb, both to the exact same macro control and with the exact same range as well. So this is really useful if you wanna have something like a utility controlling the level of multiple chains at once, or if you wanna have the same effect on multiple chains with the same macro mappings, it's a really, really, really useful feature. So now I can play this breakback and this send control here is controlling the level being sent to both the reverb and the delay.
Next up is mapping and copying values to siblings. Now this is a little bit hard to explain. So instead of explaining, let me just show you what I mean. So here I actually have a drum rack instead of an instrument rack or an audio effect rack. And on this drum rack, I have a bunch of different hi-hats. Here's the pattern that's playing. a really simple continuous hi-hat pattern. Now we can see that these hi-hats are pretty loud. They're coming out all at the maximum possible value. So instead of just turning down the track, what I wanna do is turn them all down individually. So we can see here that each of these different pads in this drum rack are all just different simpler devices. So I could go in and just set the volume of each of these different simpler devices to say negative 10, and I could move to the next one, set that to say negative 10. But instead of doing that, I can simply just set one to negative 10, say this hi-hat underscore number two here, right click on the volume control and just select copy value to siblings. And that will go and find all the different instances of simpler in this drum rack and set its volume control to the current setting of the volume control that I've selected here. And so now we can see if I go to the different simplers, the volume control is all set to negative 10. So now this little hi-hat pattern here, if I open up the MIDI clip, we can see there's some velocity variation going on in the hi-hats. However, we're not hearing this velocity variation because the volume to velocity control in the simpler devices is actually not engaged. It's at 0%. So what we can go ahead and do is to get more control over this is go to one of our hi-hats and let's map this volume to velocity control to macro one. It's again, close out each of these different macros. So we're just seeing that volume to velocity control. And now what I can go ahead and do is right click on that control that I mapped. And you'll see there's a new option, which is map to all siblings. And this basically does exactly the same thing as copying the value to the siblings, except it maps that parameter with the exact same range across the different instances of the simpler device. Instead of doing this right away, let's go ahead and actually map this macro so that it's instead of zero to 100, say zero to 50, let's close up the macro mapping. And now let's go ahead and right click and map this value to all siblings. And now if we open up the mapping, we can see that we have the volume to velocity of each of the different simplers all mapped to this exact same volume to velocity control with the exact same range that we set. Now I can use this single knob to control that parameter on all of those different instances of simpler in this drum rack with the range that I set for just that single one. By the way, if you're enjoying this video so far, I'd love to invite you to leave a like down below, subscribe if you're new. And if you didn't know, I recently launched a monthly newsletter in which I kind of compile everything that I've done over the course of that month, as well as some cool music production news and plugin releases and stuff like that that I've personally found interesting over the course of the month to send it out to you so that you can all stay up to date. If you wanna sign up for that, there'll be a link down below or you can go to matttinklermusic.com forward slash sign up. Okay, so the next thing you might not have known about racks is the ability to distribute the ranges of zones in both chains, no and key zones all equally. So to demonstrate this here, I have this really simple kind of acid pattern sound. And on this sound, I have this massive audio effect rack with a bunch of different chains. There's one here with an echo and a phaser, one here with a chorus and a reverb one with a pedal and a delay and another one just with a reverb and then just a single dry chain here. And what I wanna be able to do is control which one of these chains is active at any moment in time. So I've gone ahead and mapped the chain selector here to the first macro so that I can control that with this macro control. But currently they're all on the same zone. So what I can actually do is go ahead and say, distribute the ranges of all of these wet chains across the entire range from zero to 127. To do this, I'm just gonna go ahead and move this zone here on the reverb all the way to 127. And then I'm gonna select these first four chains by selecting the first one, holding down shift and clicking. And then I can right click anywhere in this zone selector and click on distribute ranges equally. And you can see there that we've now distributed the zones of the first four chains that I had selected between the first selected zone and the last selected zone across those different chains so that now this chain selector can evenly select between these different chains here. And this is really useful because now I can go ahead and on this bottom chain, which is our dry chain, I can have this across the entirety of the range of zero to 127. Let's go ahead and just turn down each of these different chains here as well. And now I can change 
which effect is active at any given point in time with this chain selector control and blend it in with the dry chain. <laughs> Really, really useful. And of course this works for key zone mapping and for velocity zone mapping as well in instrument racks and MIDI effects. Last but certainly not least is the ability to route audio between chains with side chain features of different effects such as compressors, gates, and auto filters. So here I have this vocal which is running through this audio effect rack. On this wet chain, I have a fairly long reverb and on the dry chain, I have nothing. I need a reason why. And what I want to do is actually have it so that every time this vocal sings with the dry signal, I want the reverb to kind of duck out of the way using sidechain compression. To do this, let's go ahead and add a compressor just after the reverb, open up the sidechain tab, engage the sidechain section. And now with this audio from, I'm actually going to select the drop down and select the track that this audio effect rack is on. And then instead of just leaving this as pre effects, I'm actually gonna select the second drop down menu. And you'll see here, I have the ability to select the chain that I want to receive that audio from. I could go the wet pre the effects, but actually what I'm gonna do is go ahead and go try pre effects. And now this compressor is receiving its side chain input from this dry chain, which is allowing us to duck the wet chain out of the way by just adjusting the controls on this compressor. I need a reason why. I need a reason why. And why this is really cool is that this sidechain routing actually saves to the preset or we could use this to copy across multiple tracks as well. So for example, if I created a new audio track and copied this to that audio track, we could see that that routing of that compressor has actually changed to the seventh audio track and retained that rack routing here as opposed to us having to reset up that side chain routing signal. So this is super useful to be able to create your own preset racks. And in fact, I've actually used this a bunch myself to do this exact same thing that I've demonstrated here in this video. You can also do some really cool things with this by engaging like the listen section and having the audio route between different chains. It can get really complicated and maybe I'll do a video on that at some point in the future. But for now, there are five things that you may not have known about racks in Ableton Live. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and I'll see you all in the next video.